Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us for today's presentation on monarch conservation planning tools. I'm Tracy McLeaf. I'm a biologist with the Fish and Wildlife Service at the National Conservation Training Center in West Virginia. And we really appreciate your interest in this webinar series. And now I'd like you to meet Cora Lund Preston. She's going to, she's from Monarch Joint Venture, and she's going to introduce today's presenters. Cora? Hi, everyone. Thanks, Tracy, and thanks, everyone, for joining us. As Tracy mentioned, my name is Cora Lund Preston from the Monarch Joint Venture. I'm also joined by the Monarch Joint Venture Program Coordinator, Wendy, and Education Assistant, Shelby. Today, Dr. Holly Holt and Jason Rowiter are joining us to present on new monarch conservation planning tools created by USGS as part of the Monarch Conservation Science Partnership. Dr. Holly Holt is the Monarch Joint Venture Science Coordinator. She's been working closely with the Monarch Conservation Science Partnership to develop a national protocol framework for monitoring monarchs and their habitat. Information gained from, gained from this framework will help us inform monarch conservation strategies. Holt has a background in pollinator health and biology, and she received her PhD in entomology from Penn State in 2015. Jason Rowiter has worked for the USGS Upper Midwest Environmental Services Center for almost 20 years as a spatial applications biologist. He has interdisciplinary experience in biology, geographical information systems, and application programming. His work emphasizes landscape ecology and the creation of flexible tools and models to assess species habitats. So if any questions come up during today's presentation, Shelby, Wendy, and I will be monitoring the chat box where we encourage you to enter your questions. We'll save your questions until the end, and we will have a question and answer period uh, when our presenters have finished where some of these questions will be addressed. So now I'll turn it over to Holly to get started. Thanks, Cora. Before beginning, um, before Jason begins his presentation, I'd like to offer a brief review of monarch biology and summarize the research that led to the development of the USGS tools that are the subject of today's webinar. The eastern monarch population overwinters in forests in the central mountainous region of Mexico and reproduces east of the Rocky Mountains and as far north as Canada. Every winter, the eastern monarch population gathers in dense overwintering colonies in the forests of central Mexico. Researchers measure the cumulative area occupied by these colonies in hectares, providing an annual estimate of the eastern monarch population size. Unfortunately, the eastern monarch population is in decline and reached its lowest recorded numbers during the winter of 2013 and 2014 where the colonies cumulatively occupied less than one hectare of overwintering habitat in Mexico. While many factors have likely contributed to the eastern monarch population's decline, including climate change, agrochemicals, and shortages of floral nectar resources, the decline of the eastern population has been linked to loss of milkweed from the north-central region of the U.S. or the Corn Belt. As you'll recall, monarch caterpillars require milkweed to develop and the adoption of glyphosate-tolerant GMO crops has led to a large and documented decline of milkweed in agricultural lands that historically produced large percentages of monarchs that overwintered in Mexico. Noting the declines in monarch populations, the Monarch Conservation Science Partnership was formed as a working group in 2009 in Fort Collins, Colorado. The Monarch Conservation Science Partnership, or MCSP, is an affiliation of researchers and conservation professionals that have been using available data to model monarch populations and assess the impacts of threats, establish population trends and habitat goals for monarch conservation, and to develop conservation tools like those Jason will present in today's webinar. Today, I will briefly summarize three of the research projects conducted by the MCSP that form the basis for the creation of the USGS tools Jason will talk about. For a more in-depth discussion of these research studies, please check out our webinar titled Monarch Conservation Science Partnership, which aired on the 26th of May. It is available through both the MJV and NCTC websites. So now on to research project summaries. First, noting the downward trend in the eastern monarch population overwintering size, the MCSB conducted an extinction risk analysis. 
This analysis produce, predicted the chances that the eastern population will shrink to an unsustainably small size. This analysis found, not only and unsurprisingly, that the eastern population is shrinking, but also that, according to IUCN standards, monarchs are at significant risk of extinction and face a risk that's um, greater than 20% over the next 20 years. To reduce the chances of the eastern migratory population, to reduce chances of eastern migratory population collapse, the analysis recommended restoring the overwintering monarch population size to at least six hectares of overwintering monarchs in Mexico. To reach this conservation target, the MCSP, among other conservation actions, recommends adding milkweed back to the north central northeast landscape. In fact, the MCSP estimates that approximately 1.4 billion stems of milkweed were lost from the U.S. landscape since the introduction of glyphosate-resistant crops. Study results recommend restoring approximately 85% of this milkweed in the north central U.S. region and 15% in the northeast. To figure out where milkweed could be restored to the eastern monarch breeding range, the MCSP took a landscape level approach. The MCSP divided possible breeding habitats into various land use sectors, including marginal cropland, agricultural lands, CRP lands, right of ways, protected grasslands, and urban and suburban spaces. By estimating how much milkweed is currently present in these sectors and calculating how much milkweed could be reasonably added to, the, added to existing levels, these analyses suggest that we'll need help from all sectors to reach our goals of placing an additional 1.4 billion stems on the east of milkweed in the eastern monarch population breeding range. In other words, an all-hands-on-deck approach is required for success. The tools that Jason will present today are meant to aid conservation biologists, practitioners, and land managers in conservation planning for the species. Jason, when you're ready, please take it away. All right. Thank you, Holly, for the great introduction. Uh, today I'm going to describe and demonstrate the application of the Monarch Conservation Science Partnership desktop and online spatial tools that were developed by myself and Wayne Thog Martin here at the USGS Upper Midwest Environmental Sciences Center. We received funding for this work from the USGS Ecosystems Mission Area, and folks from the Monarch Conservation Science Partnership were integral in helping us develop these tools by providing guidance on data acquisition, parameter setting, and tool debugging. I'm going to describe first the uh, desktop tools that were developed and follow that up with a description of the online tools. As Holly mentioned in her slides, there's been a well-documented decline in the eastern population of monarchs for over a long period of time. We were brought in to assist the Monarch Conservation Science Partnership by developing geospatial planning tools to help guide the conservation of the monarch butterfly. These tools were aimed at helping to prioritize colonies for monarch conservation and estimate the density of milkweeds currently on the landscape and how this number is affected by changes in management and land use. The desktop tools were developed as an ArcMap 10.3 toolbox using the Python scripting library and contained three tools, the county ranking tool, the milkweed calculators, and the county area adjustment tool. These tools are downloadable from the UMS website. And in addition to the tools, are prepackaged with spatial data sets formatted for the tools and also tables summarizing various data sets. A user manual is also available for the website, uh, which describes the tools and provides demonstrations on their use. The first tool I'll describe is the county ranking tool. This tool allows researchers, conservation planners, and resource managers the ability to prioritize counties within the conterminous United States according to multiple input field criteria. The first step in the development of this tool was the creation of a spatial data layer representing U.S. counties assembled and attributed with the information for each monarch relevant input criteria. Some of these criteria represent positive attributes for monarch butterfly conservation, while others quantify potential threats. Here's a list of data sources we use to assemble the data layer used to inform the model. Some of these data are distributed at the county scale, whereas the other data sets are based upon finer resolution raster layers that have been summarized to the common county scale. We tried to use the most current data available to us for each data theme. This included data layers related to land use, land cover, infrastructure, 
conservation protection status, agricultural related data, and uh, monarch and milkweed specific data sets as well. Here's a list of some of the approximately 200 data fields within the input data layers attribute table that are available to the user when running the county ranking tool. Some of the data sets summarized were de derived from other data sets, for instance, the calculation of crop edge. Upon tool download, the complete list of fields and their descriptions is available in the folder of summary tables. To initiate the county ranking tool, the user would click the script icon entitled County Ranking Tool within the Monarch Conservation Planning Tools toolbox. A dialog window will open with several input parameters to fill. First, select the county summary shapefile. This is provided when you download the tools. If a subset of the tools are selected, only the selected counties will be included in the analysis. Next, you designate the unique county ID from the drop-down menu. For this input data, we would select GeoID. Next, specify a directory to create the outputs generated by the tool, an output shapefile name, and a symbology layer used to color the output. The user can specify whether or not to calculate statistics for the input fields designated. If this box is checked, the resulting attribute table will be amended with summary statistics including mean, max, min, standard deviation, sum, and range for each input field. This will increase the processing time of the tool. Uh, next, the user specifies which input field criteria to use to rank the counties. For each input field criteria, the user must specify the field name from the shapefile, a weight, and whether or not lower values are preferred. The, com the combined weights for all selected input field criteria must equal 100, and no input field criteria can be used more than once. Allotting a larger weight to a specific input field criteria will give that criteria more influence in the final ranking. The user may check the lower value preferred checkbox if they would like to devalue those counties with high values for certain input criteria, for example, pesticide application rates. When all of these input parameters are set, press the OK button to run the tool. Upon tool completion, a new data layer will be added within the active data frame within ArcMap. This new data layer will be named with a specific output shapefile name with a two-digit unique suffix appended at the end. If an, there we go. If an output symbology layer was specified, the shapefile will be shaded accordingly. In this example, counties in the output are given a higher model score value if they had a high grass to crop conversion. lower percent grass, a lower market value, larger increase in glyphosate application, and a lower percent of the county in the Conservation Reserve Program. This tool's purpose is to help researchers, managers, and others interested in monarch conservation highlight counties that may be candidates for further, more detailed analysis at a finer resolution than the county scale. This tool is valuable at highlighting variations nationally according to these selected input field criteria. In addition to the shape file that's generated, a log text file is also created. The file name for this text file is the same as the output shape file generated by the tool with a TXT file extension. Documented within this text file are the input field criteria selections, their associated weights, and whether or not lower values were the preferred characteristic. Summary statistics, mean, max, min, standard deviation, and range are included for the output field generated and also for each input field criteria used if designated. The output data layer's attribute table will have several attribute fields appended to it. There are several steps taken in the ranking process. First, the scores for each input field criteria are normalized for each county to a consistent scale of 0 to 100. Next, the normalized score for each separate input criteria is multiplied by the user-defined weight. The value is then summed for each individual input criteria used to create the overall output score for each county. Two separate milkweed calculator tools were also developed to allow the ability to model the anticipated number of milkweeds on the landscape. One of the tools allows the number of milkweed stems to be calculated based upon projected milkweed densities for several different habitat classes entered by the user in stems per acre. The second tool performs the same calculations using milkweed density inputs entered in the format of meters squared per hectare. The tools use a county summary shapefile as a base layer for analysis. A seamless monarch-relevant land cover map was used as a source for the summary information contained within this shapefile. This raster data set was developed as part of this project. 
there were a total of 42 different land cover classes created. These classes represent areas on the landscape which may provide potential habitat for milkweed plants. This data set was created for the lower 48 contiguous United States. Here's a list of data sources used to develop the monarch relevant land cover map. We use a lot of the same input data sources that we use for the county ranking tool, including those related to land cover, cropland, infrastructure, protection status, and cropland productivity. And here's a list of land cover classes developed using these data sources. Some of these classes are labeled with a low, medium, or high attribute. This describes their relative amenability or potential for milkweed introduction. Corn and soybeans are separated based upon their commodity crop productivity index, uh, whether marginal or, or not marginal soils. Uh, developed and transportation classes are separated based upon their proximity to urban areas. Grassland and pasture classes are separated according to conservation protection. And CRP is divided according to being classified as wet or non-wet. So here's these separated classes. Corn is marginal or not marginal. CRP, grassland whether protected, pasture whether protected, and things like uh, developed weather within urban or outside of urban. We received assistance from folks within the Monarch Conservation Science Partnership to assign milkweed amenability rankings to each of those land cover classes. Here's an example of rankings applied to some of the cropland data layer codes. So for instance, these are the cropland data layer descriptions, and then they're uh, categorized milkweed amenability rankings. Here's a national monarch relevant land cover map with the legend of individual classes. This data set, once summarized to the county scale, provides the foundation for the milkweed calculator tools. And here's a zoomed in portion of the same map showing the individual classes and how they are arranged on the landscape. This data is not available to the public at this resolution due to the inherent sensitivity of two of the data layers, which are the field level CRP polygons and transmission lines. Uh, only the data summarized to the county scale is available to the public. And in this image in particular, uh, we are zoomed into an area that doesn't show any CRP polygons or uh, power lines. So you get an idea of kind of what the, the uh, raster data set looks like. To initiate one of the milkweed calculator tools, Click the script icon entitled Milkweed Calculator Stems Per Acre or Milkweed Calculator Meter Square Per Hectare within the Monarch Conservation Planning Tools Toolbox. For this example, we will highlight the tool based upon stems per acre input measurements. Once the tool is selected, the user must identify the input county summary shapefile. This is a shapefile with milkweed habitat class area measurements appended to the attribute table. The shapefile's area measurement attribute should be in acres for the stems per acre tool. If a subset of the counties are selected, only the selected counties will be included in the analysis. Next, you select again the unique county ID, followed by the field denoting the appropriate area field, in this case for acres, and the director on the computer's hard drive to store the outputs. In addition, a name should be specified for the output shape and if desired an output symbology again chosen. The outputs for the tools can be limited to any of seven different monarch model regions developed for this project. This is accomplished by checking the box next to the region or regions to include, for example, um, whether to exclude the Florida, Monarch region, Mexico, Western, South, so on. Finally, the user designates the predicted milkweed density values for each of the milkweed habitat classes. Those are down here. So for corn and corn on margin of soils, a uh, milkweed stumps per acre measurement is entered. Here's a map of the locations of each of those monarch regions used for the tool. It's generally believed that milkweed density differs among land covers by region. As such, it is recommended that individual regions with region-specific estimates of milkweed density be calculated separately. We expect to see 
different milkweed densities in various types of land cover classes. Here's a table showing some of these predicted milkweed densities taken from the literature. When all the input parameters are set, you press the OK button to initiate the tool. Here's the map showing the output data layer shaded according to the mean stems per acre measurement for each county model. In this case, the core north central region. So you can see the darker green areas here in Iowa, and then the orange and red areas where it's a lower stems per acre value. Again, in addition to the shape file that is generated, a log text file is also created. The file name for this text file is the same as the output shape file generated by the tool but with a TXT file extension. Documented within this text file are the milkweed density designated for each milkweed habitat class, summary statistics, mean, max, min, standard deviation, sum and range for each milkweed habitat class if that box was checked, and summary statistics for overall milkweed density attributes. For this model run, there were over 1 billion stems predicted within this region. The power of this tool is the ability to model changes in milkweed stems on the landscape using adjusted milkweed density values for amenable land cover classes. What we are attempting to do here is model the process, processes that could increase the density of milkweed within the area of interest due to such things as planting milkweed, altering management practices to be more, to be more pollinator friendly, expansion of organic farming, limiting applications of neonicotinoids and other pesticides, and others. So we can rerun the tool using modified input milkweed density values for those amenable land cover types. So for this example, we are increasing the uh, milkweed stems per acre for these two classes and then also the others, but I'm not showing those. And here's the output once the tool is run with those changes applied. If we Go to the next slide, we see the changes in milkweed density model under the two scenarios. The base scenario, and then we can go back to that modified scenario. So we see with that change in milkweed densities for those particular land cover types, an increase in predicted milkweed on the landscape. Now if we look at the output log for the modified scenario, we see an increase of 500 million stems based upon the changes in milkweed density for those land cover types. A separate tool was developed to allow the user to make hypothetical adjustments to the area of monarch relevant land cover classes for a user defined set of selected counties. These theoretical changes in landscape composition can help to inform the user on the impact of specific conservation development activities. Not just changes in the management on certain land cover classes, but actual hypothetical conversions of one land cover type to another. The user can update the total area of a land cover class within the selected counties or change the percentage of area in a particular class within those counties. For any increase, increases in habitat class, there are subsequent decreases in other habitat class selected by the user to make sure that the total area of, for all habitat classes does not change. Outputs from the tool include added fields with adjusted land cover class area measurements and an output log text file. The updated shape file and adjusted fields can then be used as inputs to the milk, for the milkweed calculator tools. To initiate the tool, click the script icon entitled County Area Adjustment Tool within the Monarch Conservation Planning Tool Toolbox. Within the dialog window, the user must select a county summary shapefile depicting the area of milkweed habitat classes to edit. Next, select a land cover class to increase the area and also a different land cover class to perform a decrease in area of the same value. The user can elect to input an absolute area increase decrease or a percentage increase decrease of the current habitat class total. In this case, we are modeling a 100% increase in the area of CRP non-wet, which is this code, and a, sub, and a similar decrease in corn on marginal soils. The 
extent of area of change model is applied uniformly to each county selected. Here's the output log from this particular model run. If there is not enough of the milkweed land cover class in a particular county for which the user has requested to have the area's acres decreased from, the tool will default to the maximum available area. So for instance, a request is made to convert 11,772 acres of marginal corn to CRP non-wet here, but currently there is only 7,540 acres of marginal corn in that county. The tool will default to only converting the maximum amount available to 7,540 acres in the county's attribute table. Therefore, the absolute area or percent increase selected by the user is a potential increase. The actual increase applied to all selected counties may be lower, in this case just under 50%, as indicated here. The tool will document each county where the requested amount was not completely filled. That's all kept in that log. When the tool is completed, the user can then rerun the milkweed calculator using these revised land cover class fields as input. In this instance, creating two new fields, the CL098 under bar 01 and CL002 under bar 01. Those are the new fields added. Here's the output map generated by rerunning the milkweed calculator using these revised land cover class area measurements and using the modified milkweed density inputs applied previously. And the output log showing an increase now of 690 million stems as compared to the baseline current scenario run originally. Upon completion of the desktop tools, it became apparent that there was a desire to offer these tools in an additional online format. Not all desired users of the tools have access to ArcMap or the training necessary to operate the desktop tools within the GIS platform. With this in mind, we developed an ArcGIS online web mapping application loaded with relevant Monarch data sets and also integrating the county ranking tool and Milkweed calculator as ArcGIS geoprocessing services. These online tools are available from the USGS Upper Midwest Environmental Sciences Center website displayed on this slide. Once the tools and map view loads, the first thing that is opened is a window displaying the help information describing the tools here. Their operation and data sets used to inform them. It is rec recommended that the user reads through this information before using the tools. In addition to the tools, the application is loaded with several Monarch-relevant da spatial data layers that the user can view. This is available by selecting the Layer List button located here. Layers can be turned off and on, and the legends can be viewed. Additionally, by clicking the Base Map button, the user can change the background map used in the application. There are also buttons that allow the user to make measurements, uh, draw features on the map, and also to print the map. Specific to the Monarch Conservation Science Partnership, two tool buttons have been added to the map, the Milkweed Calculator button and the County Ranking Tool button. Pressing the Milkweed Calculator button, an input dialog window appears with several boxes for the user to enter desired stems per acre densities for the milkweed amenable land cover classes listed here. Similar to the desktop tools, the user has the ability to limit the outputs of the tool to any number of seven monarch regions listed here with checkboxes. Clicking the help link down here will supply detailed information on the tool. When all the inputs are filled out, the user presses execute. If any stems per acre density values are not filled out for a particular class, the tool will not run. The tool then calculates the total predicted number of milkweed on the landscape by multiplying the area of each milkweed amenable land cover class for each county by the user-specified predicted milkweed stems 
per acre value for that class, and then summing the individual predicted total stem count values for each land cover class to get an overall total number of stems. So we'll create a table summarizing total milkweed stems broken up by monarch region entitled Milkweed Regional Tab Results. Similar ta table will also be created called the milkweed total table results, and that just has the uh, total stems calculated for that model run. And an output data layer entitled milkweed model output data layer. These are all displayed within the output tab of the milkweed calculator dialog window and also within the layer list. Darker green values within the map depict higher density of milkweed stems predicted. If we were to click on a county, for instance this one here, a pop-up window opens that we can view the data specific to that county, including the acres for each of the land cover classes, as well as the total acres in that county, and in the output milkweed stem calculations, including the total stems and the stem density there. Outputs can be exported as text files or as a feature collection or exported to a GeoJSON file. To rerun the model using different input parameters, first remove the existing outputs from the Milkweed Cutler dialog window output tab using the remove icon, which is this X icon here. Then click on the input tab again and update the stems per acre values for land cover types you'd like to change and any monarch regions you'd like excluded from the analysis and then press execute down at the bottom of that window. The county ranking tool was also developed as an online tool. We limited the input criteria to 28 of the most important criteria. Here are some listed. To initiate the tool, click the county ranking tool button here. A dialog window will open with several input parameters to fill. For each input parameter listed, the user will designate a numeric positive integer value for the weight for that particular criterion in the model. The larger the weight, the more influence that criterion will have in the ranking process. All criteria are required to have a weight entered. If the user does not want that particular criteria to have influence on the model, a zero should be entered. Again, the user may check the lower value preferred checkbox to devalue those counties with high normalized values since some of these criteria re represent positive attributes for monarch butterfly conservation while others quantify potential threats. For this example, I've given percent grassland pasture hay a weight of 20 here and cultivated crops a weight of 20 and lower value preferred checked. Percent of county CRP weight of 20 Glyphosate application rate, 2012, a weight of 20. And I'll give the milkweed species richness weight of 20. Once all criteria weights have been entered, the user selects the execute button at the bottom of the dialog window. Upon execution, the tool will create a new data layer entitled County Ranking Tool Model Output Data Layer and a table summarizing output model scores called the County Ranking Tool Output Summary Table. The summary table has fields denoting number of counties, mean model score for all counties, standard deviation for all model scores, and the total weight supplied by the user that was used for the calculation. The output map will be shaded according to this color ramp. Higher values in red and purple and lower values in blue and green. Click on individual county. We'll again bring up the county's individual model values and the table and the output layer can be exported to the user's computer. In summary, the tools described here provide researchers, conservation planners, and resource managers with the ability to explore scenarios for predicting milkweed available to monarch butterflies and to highlight national scale conservation priorities. 
We feel these are initial but essential steps in the conservation design process. Coupled with properly elicited stakeholder goals, these tools can provide users with a means for depicting a path toward restoring monarch butterflies to former levels of abundance. And that is all I have. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Jason and Holly. Um, we really appreciate you sharing your knowledge and expertise with us today. And thanks again to everyone who's listening. We're really glad that you're all here. Um, we're now going to take the next few minutes to talk with Holly and Jason and ask them some questions that came up during their presentations. If you have questions still, make sure to enter those into the chat box, and we will get to all of the questions that we can today. We did also record today's webinar, so if you want to share it with your friends or come back and watch it again, um, it will be available later on on the NCTC and Monarch Joint Venture websites. We'll follow up after today's webinar with a short survey for you to complete, um, sharing any feedback you have. We'd love to hear from you and really appreciate your response to that. So we'll get started with the Q&A now. Um, if we go over the allotted time, feel free to step out when you need to. Um, and as I said, we'll try to get to as many of the questions as we have time for today. So let's start with a pretty simple one for Jason. Um, Jason, are these tools usable for the Western monarch population? Uh, the, the data for both tools, the county ranking tool and the milkweed calculator tools, was developed for the entire lower 48 states. So yes, you could you could model um, just the Western region if you wanted to. And like we said before on the slides, um, those milkweed um, density values might differ than the North Central, for instance. So you would probably want to apply different different values for those. But yes. Great. Thank you. And then, is there any special software required to use the online tools? No, you just need a browser and internet connection to use those online tools. Great. And what software would you recommend folks have if they want to use the desktop tools? Uh, the desktop tools are an ArcMap 10.3 toolbox, so you need to have that um, software loaded. OK, great. And then um, getting to a little bit more of a technical question, again, for you, Jason. Uh, how can users find out how the uh, attributes for the county ranking tool were derived, and what were the inputs? Is that information available in the program, or how could they find out more about that? Yeah, so if you go, let me see if it's the website here. If you go to this website, you can download the desktop tools from there, and also there's a user's manual. And within that user manual is a detailed description of how the county ranking, um, the, the source layer was developed for the county ranking tool, and also how the, uh, the seamless um, monarch relevant land cover data layer was also developed. So the, the actual steps used to, to, to create those layers is outlined in detail within that user manual. Great. Um, and then. Similarly, um, do your models account for monarch preference for different milkweeds or different milkweed density or quality? No, it does not separate by milkweed uh, species. Uh, and when you supply those milkweed density values for each of those land cover classes, um, I guess you have to take into account which milkweed you are interested in when you, when you apply those values. Okay. Um, and then have data been gathered, or are there plans to gather data to verify the on-the-ground abundance of milkweed in various habitat types as it relates to this model? Um, well, a lot of the, the, the values we use, like when you start the tool, it actually has a default value specified. And those are values that were taken from the literature. Um, so that's kind of your baseline. Uh, but you know those are easily modified by the user if they want to alter those. But but the the groundwork has already been done to to actually look to see what kind of milkweed density there are for a lot of these line cover classes, and those were developed uh, primarily outside of my realm, but with within the Monarch Conservation Science Partnership, they've done a lot of that type of groundwork. Um, this is Holly, and I'd just like to add to Jason's response. Sure. Um, the MCSP is working on developing an integrated monitoring framework, and the goals of this framework are to monitor monarchs and their habitat 
um, in a spatially representative way. So hopefully in the future we'll be able to gather information about milkweed density across the U.S. landscape and, and up to six strata, which include protected grasslands, unprotected grasslands, right-of-way habitats, um, urban and suburban spaces, and CRP lands and agricultural lands. Um, and granted, as you move across the U.S. from the east to west, you know, these values may differ, the species may differ, and this framework aims to collect information about milkweed species, milkweed density in these different strata across the U.S. But that, that is a framework in progress, and we're also looking to monitor several other biological attributes that are relevant to um, monarchs and their survival, including availability of living nectar plants, and then look at monarch utilization of these habitats and presence of both immature monarchs and adults. Great. Thank you both. Um, can you provide an example of how the milk, milkweed calculator or the county mapping tool could be used by a practitioner? By a practitioner meaning? By a conservation practitioner. Um, what's a kind of an example scenario that someone could use these tools? Well, besides what I outlined, um, yeah. oh, I guess just um, by altering those milkweed densities, you can kind of look at how, uh, under different management scenarios, what you can look for for increases or decreases in, in milkweeds based upon those values. I guess that's the way I would see them using it, just altering that, altering the amount of land, land cover types within a county, see how that alters the amount of milkweeds on the landscape, if that answers it. Yeah, I think so. Um, just waiting one moment while we pull some more questions from the chat here. Oh, so sure, while you're um, pulling questions, I just have a, a couple more thoughts to quickly add to what I discussed earlier. Um, I think it is important to mention that as this framework has been developed, in development, you know, we're really hoping to engage lots of different monitoring entities in helping to collect this data because to gather this data at the scale necessary to gather an understanding of monarch habitat and trends, we would hope that anyone who's out there doing monitoring would be able to collect data and contribute it to this framework. Um, there's a previous webinar, it's the, the same one that I mentioned earlier, that was aired on the 26th of May that talks a little bit about this framework. Um, and so there's some more some more details in there. Great, thanks, Holly. Um, so where can we get updates on um, when the monitoring framework is available, Holly? So that's something that's currently um, being figured out. Plans for 2017 are being worked on, and um, the MCSP is going to be having their annual meeting in January. And one of the topics of discussion are working on how we're going to create um, a platform to put protocols online and also provide information about where the priority sites are for monitoring. Great. So another question for Jason. Um, sure. So based on your presentation, it's it sounds like there's a lot of flexibility for users to put in their own data um, and is an understanding of existing milkweed densities. Is that accurate? Yep. Actually, that's why I made it. Let me see if I can find the slide here. Um, like within the milkweed calculator, that's why I have you specify explicitly the county summary shape file, the unique ID, things like that. I could have hard coded that, but I allowed it to be open ended so the user could make modifications or create their own, for instance. Um, summary of, of land cover area within each each county and, and run the tools that way. And then you just have to specify where um, the fields lie within those, within that user-defined um, attribute table. So yeah, user user can pr enter their own data as well. Same with the county ranking tool. Great. All right. Um, let me see. That looks like the last question that I have on my list right now. Let's see if we have any more trickling in just for a moment here. J 
Jason, would you mind putting up that website um, on your last slide again so sure. folks can see that? And okay, we did have another question. Um, will the existing predicted densities uh, be updated as new data become available? Um, we don't have any plans for updates right now, but that's something that could be done. I guess is the easiest way to put that. Okay, and great. resources available, and, and and you know how we go forward from here with the tool development. Okay. All right. Well, um, I think that's what we have for questions. Um, like I mentioned, um, and like Holly mentioned, there are um, other webinars available um, that uh, touch on some of the Monarch Conservation Science Partnership issues, and this will be posted on the website. Um, but I just want to say a big thank you again to Jason and Holly for sharing with us, and thanks to NCPC for hosting this webinar and to all of our participants for joining us today. Um, we hope to see you for our next webinar about monarch overwintering biology on Thursday, January 26th. And you can find out more information about our upcoming webinars through the spring on the Monarch Joint Venture website. So thanks again so much, everyone, and uh, happy holidays.